Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and yesterday was an extremely long travel ball day. I was up at, uh, I think I was out of here by 7 yesterday. I had to go um, up north and we ended up um, playing two games right out of the gate. Um, and then they won both games, so then we had to play at 4 o'clock. Then they won that game, so they had to play in the championship. I traded up spots with my wife, and she wasn't home until, I guess, 8.30 or 9. But my 10-year-old did get a ring, and he, he got the most valuable player as, the, as a hitter. He switch-hitted, so he, hit, he got hits on both sides of the plate. He was 5 for 8 on the day, I believe, and um, played really good first base. I saw him throw at least two or three guys out. He's on his way. And I told him, I said, look, you see how hard your your seventeen year old brother's working. You're you're uh, heading into that stage where you got to decide how serious you want to be. If you want to take it next level, it's time to get real serious. Okay, check this out. This is a zero hedge article. I thought was great. A new era of gold. Estimated world uh, gold holdings reach record. This was the best quote out of the article to me. In a previous article, I speculated gold could reach $8,000 in the next 10 years. In context of increasing geopolitical tensions, a weaponized dollar and sky-high debt levels across the globe historically alleviated through inflation, central banks will continue to buy gold in the foreseeable future. You know the drill, folks. Miles Franklin is my new sponsor. You can, uh, you've got to call them or email them to get the best prices is what they told me. Use code DAI Gold. info at milesfranklin.com is the email, 952-929-7006. And subjective views created me this cool little graphic to use because they were embarrassed for me because I was just using a Google Docs, like typed out some words because of the techno technological prowess of this channel, right? More than like technological joke. Now, gold is one thing, but why should you, why, I mean, really, why do we need gold? We've got Brad Sherman. You trust him, right? Because he now, he's been negative on cryptocurrency, but now he thinks we need a CBDC because the government works for the people, right? According to him, they do. Want a system in, this is from want this a is from system crypto Darren. in which huge amounts of money are made and concealed. And they describe the US government as Darth Vader. No, it is not right for all the power in this world to be in the hands of the crypto bros. It is appropriate for the American people and their democratically elected institutions to have a role in, the fi in, in, in finance. What would, so what is the effort of cryptocurrency here? I think it will be unsuccessful, but it's trying to become a currency. One of those efforts is to try to make the dollar as impaired as possible because that's its competition. To do that, try to prevent the dollar from being digital. Now I'd prefer a digital system run by a private banking system. That is our current uh, uh, you kids uh, with your loud music and your I don't know if we've got some uh, I don't know if that's copyright stuff so I'm going to stop there but you get the picture we know where this guy's coming from we also know where this guy's coming from Michael Saylor has acquired an additional 5,445 Bitcoin for $147.3 million at an average price of 27053 per Bitcoin folks there are, there's only two destinations for Michael Saylor. It's, he's either going to be the richest person in the world or, or, or the richest company in the world or padded cell. There is, there's not going to be an in-between for this guy. I think the history books on, books on him will prove me to be right. 
Now, digital perspectives, Brad Combs uncovered a very interesting clip this morning. This is David Schwartz in the early days. This is eight, um, um, he says, we know XRP is not a security today, but it was very different eight years ago. How far we've come. This is a great candid clip from Joel Katz, uh, David Schwartz. Listen to the clip. Let me ask you, David, do you yourself hold any XRP? I do, actually. I hold, I think, something like 16 million XRP. Good Lord, man. <laughs> 16 million. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's 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 funny. Um, I would hold more, and I think the risk reward makes sense. I mean, like if it's a fifty percent chance that it'll double, it's a good investment, right? Sure. The problem is my job, my stock options, to some extent, my professional reputation. You know, like how many <laughs> eggs can I put in that one basket? You know. <laughs> no, that's true. Hey, well, let me let me let me buy a million from you. How much for a million, man? Uh, I don't know what the, <laughs> I don't know what the so the, the price has been like a roller coaster. So it's like one point four cents right now, and it was up at two and a half just like a month ago. Oh wow! And it's been as high as five, and it's been much lower. It's I can't figure out what the price depends on. It doesn't seem to correlate with our announcements. I mean, like we've had major announcements. We announced that we added to the board of directors a former director of the President's National Economic Council, mm -hmm. and that didn't seem to have much effect on the price. And we announced big partnerships, and it doesn't. Seem to, and then all of a sudden for no reason the price will just suddenly jump up from half a penny to two and a half cents wow that's weird totally don't get it have you been tempted at any point to sell off a certain percentage of your xrp no not really not really when the price goes up i don't feel tempted to sell when the price goes down i feel tempted <laughs> to buy i see it as a long-term high risk essentially yes i think that's a good way to look at it that's realistic yeah but I have no illusions about the risk. I completely understand the fact that the Ripple Labs could disappear tomorrow. It's all or nothing. In the beginning. Or as Naveen Gupta said, it's we're either going to put a dent in the universe or we're going to go away. They did not go away, folks. Didn't even know if what we were doing was legal. You know, people were arguing that things like Bitcoins were inherently counterfeit and that they were violations of various federal laws. Mm -hmm. We don't have that fear, but I always had this sort of philosophy like we could disappear at any minute and that hasn't faded as quickly as perhaps it should. Oh, me. Look at Stefan, or Mr. Huber, that is. Consensus somehow managed to delete all of the screenshots of their old pre-2023 website from the Internet Archive. A search for consensus.net redirects directly to consensus.io at Internet Time Machine. So the old screenshots are, are no longer accessible. Or do any or do any of you manage to do it? I don't, wait, I don't know what that means. Okay. Anyway, I wanted to point something out. Um, I was in Stephen Narioff's thread and I saw this where he liked two tweets. Laura Shin's silence is on this is deafening. And then Crypto Darren says, Stephen Narioff, do you have any dirt on Laura Shin? I never liked her. Well, we've covered Laura Shin a lot on this program. We've brought up um, some of these things. She was always very negative on, and, and she never would, even when she was writing her Ethereum book, she never would even acknowledge ETHgate and, and certainly didn't include it in her entire book on, on Ethereum, even though we were trying to remind her at the time. She would not address any of it. But there's another thing that I never, ever heard her do. But she did it to Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson, and Ripple constantly. And that is, well, first of all, she was negative all the time on Ripple and XRP. She would write these articles to, to try to highlight how wealthy all of these the, the people at Ripple were. This is the one where she said he's the Chris Larson was the richest person in crypto. Um, and this was at the height um, of, let me see this. Yeah. Both articles about look, look how, if that's not a word, an article worded for a specific purpose and to put out a specific message, I don't know what is meet the crypto billionaires getting rich from, so highlighting getting rich, right? Both of these were written at rip at XRP's all time high, right around that time. Now, do you remember? what Tim Draper said. Listen, the, the beginning is Tim Draper and the second is uh, Laura Shin at Consensus, the conference in 2018. Remember when Tim Draper said this? Or they adopt the technology. I think no, no, that's at the end. end. They will adopt no, the technology. No, this is the last thing they do. No, yeah, it's, like it's after, seven, seven, it's eight, after, eight, 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 right, eight, eight, eight. it's after the, the, the press planning 
if they, they plant the press stories. I've said this before on my podcast, Ripple, the company, they're definitely probably one of the leaders when it comes to enterprise blockchain. Um, they are kind of like massively wealthy in addition for creating this mm -hmm. extra cryptocurrency that um, they hold like 60% of the supply or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, it hasn't really gained adoption. So um, meanwhile, they're, they're you know, because they're all becoming very wealthy off of it. So we'll see if they can, uh, you know, make it live up to the value that it has. Now, folks, I've watched politics my whole life, and if I've learned anything, these political machines in politics, they have what's called talk talking points. And these talking points are put out <clears throat> across these political organizations, and all of the people repeat those talking points. And if there's one talking point that, I heard, that I've heard about Ripple for years now, it's Ripple the company, great. XRP, I just don't get that. How many times have we heard Mike Novogratz say that and all these different... And I always... I watched it over the last few years and I was like, man, they've got talking points. And then Tim Draper here says that, that you plant your media. And I'm not saying Laura Shin's a plant. I'm just saying this is how political operations work. Well, if you were, if you were in a race for a global reserve currency, do you think there'd be any politics involved in that? So I asked Laura Shin because I'm curious. Hey, Laura, can you direct me to the article's video where you highlight how wealthy the Ethereum Foundation consensus, Joseph Lubin, Vitalik Buterin, and other Ethereum founders got off of Ethereum even before they had any real adoption? Any videos of you trying to get to the bottom of who the disguised whales from the ICO were and how wealthy they got and how much of the supply they control would, would be great too. Below this video are your highlights of the same with regard to Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson, Ripple. Also, you wouldn't happen to know who some of the Ethgate media accomplices were, would you? These are all honest questions I have. Maybe Laura can help us. But so far, we ever since Stephen Narioff showed up, we can't even get her to say a word. We haven't heard anything from Mike Novogratz either. This is from Wheezy. I'd like to get Stephen Narioff's thoughts on this too. Um. The big decision the SEC is wrestling with now, and I don't think we're going to answer in a short period of time, is Ethereum. And the, the, my gut feeling is they're going to say, well, it was a, it should have been a security, but and it was a security when they when they did their ICO, but now it's a utility token, and so we're going to let that go. Is my gut feeling is what's going to happen? That's his gut feeling before the Hinman speech ever happens. Now this is interesting, uh, Mr. Huber's stirring up trouble, I love it. Based on internet searches, Bing now defines a 75% probability that Bill Hinman will be prosecuted for corruption, conspiracy, or treason. Wowzer. The prompt, create a table with a probability rating from 0 to 100% and rationale that the following individuals could be charged by the U.S. government with corruption, conspiracy, or treason. Vitalik Buterin, co-founder of Ethereum, Joseph Lubin, co-founder of Ethereum, William Hinman, former SEC director who gave a speech on Ethereum. And Bill Hinman comes in at 75%. It looks like Lubin's 25, which I think is low. Vitalik Buterin is, is that 5% or 3? I can't read it. It's small. But anyway, you get the point. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family that Bill Hinman came in at a 75% probability of being prosecuted for corruption, conspiracy, or treason. Wowzers. Thanks for listening.